So I had this visual of me and my maker at the end of my life, looking at my life and, and the gifts and talents and things and places and circumstances. And what I didn't see him going was, did you sell any more Viagra or what did you sell any more Lipitor? That just wasn't there. What I did hear was, what did you, you had the art, what'd you do with that? Why didn't you do something with that? After some wandering around in my years, I, I used to tell people I go, I didn't go straight into college. I decided I was gonna be a hippie for a while. So I traveled, went to California, lived in the Caribbean, but I didn't pay well. When it came time to, you know, what do you want to do with your life? Art wasn't really that big of a part. It was kind of like, well, okay, now what do you want to do with, you know, something serious? So I kind of went the corporate route. I went through school and got a business degree and then got hired by Xerox and worked with them for quite a while. And then I switched over to pharmaceutical sales and, and ended, you know, with Pfizer. And I just knew I wanted a good life. I wanted to, you know, live the middle class dream, I guess. I had some tragic events happen to me during a period of between about 2002, 2003 to about 2006. I lost six loved ones, like it seemed like. And then, and then we also got hit with three hurricanes. I was fading fast. My desire was, you know, I was, and my friend was dying and I had no will. I mean, I had lost my husband the year prior. So I, was, I had already been back to work. It didn't, life didn't have a lot of meaning. You know, getting up and going to work just didn't seem important anymore. And what happened, I was still working for Pfizer. And when she died, uh, she went into a coma on a Sunday. We visited on Saturday. She went into a coma on Sunday and I resigned on Monday. I resigned and uh, we had this little party and we sold a bunch of my artwork. It started the foundation and then promptly thereafter I packed up my little SUV and I took a cross country trip to California for a couple months to just, I took a niece, she went with me and we just, you know, and I, I at the final throwdown was on a, jar, you know, doing a big walk on a mountain, little hiking trail by myself and just knelt down and sobbed my heart out, you know, and then I knew. It's like I got it all out and went home and I started going, okay, if you want to be an artist, you want to do something, make her life count, then do something with this art. It takes a while to disconnect. If you've been a corporate, if you, you know, that's your identity. That's my identity for 25, 30 years was you know, in sales and marketing and a high, you know, big fat ex paycheck and right. expense account. And I jettisoned all that. <laughs> you know, people thought I was nuts. to the art help manage some of that stress because it took the focus off as if, if you just sit there and think about the bad the bad that's happening you'll never get out of it because you can just sit there and just mire yourself down in this in this muck and you never get out of it so the art having the purpose because I was going you know what Patty lived a good life so maybe that was a temporary purpose to get me going but it worked <laughs> As I gave myself permission to jettison some bad stuff, I also gave myself permission to have fun and experiment with some new stuff. I tell you what, that's another thing I've learned. Do not overlook little insignificant things because these little paint scraps, these the ultimate the ultimate byproduct of imperfection has ended up being something really fun.
simply it was too soon for me to retire from my corporate job. And I really did want to go on with the corporate job, but I wanted to have meaning. If I, you know, between now and death, <laughs> I wanted to have a life of meaning. There was a patient, a woman who bought my very first flamingo, came back to me a couple years later, and found me in an art show. And now remember, this was the very first flamingo. Put a big, put a price tag on it. It sold. It started me down the flamingo path. She finds me and she said, "You don't remember me? I bought this flamingo." I say, "Oh yeah, yeah." She goes, well, I didn't tell you this. She said, but I was, I was going through some serious cancer treatment. And, you know, my life was on the line. And she said, looking at your flamingos just brightened my day. I laughed and just had a big giggle the whole, you know. That was the first time a piece of something that I made actually had an impact on somebody's life. You know, that's pretty heady stuff. Letting go of that you don't have to be perfect. We are human. It's okay. You can screw up. Well, that principle can apply whether it's okay to, it's all right not to clean the house. You don't have to have a perfect house because I'd rather be down here painting. So that gives me permission to not be perfect upstairs. Well, I'm not going to learn and grow because one of my principles, I want to be a, I want to make a living out of being an artist. <clears throat> I have to create good art. Well, you can't be perfect. I have to give myself permission to find that good art. Mm -hmm. So in the art, it's funny, it's sort of like that which you let go of is what happens. that the color and all the craziness that surrounds me, I think it's part of the reason that I kind of am being successful at what I do because it is kind of inspiring and thrilling to be around all this.